The dreaded black flag is a rare sight in Formula One. For the driver concerned, it means instant disqualification and is only awarded by the stewards when there is a serious violation of a rule. Juan Pablo Montoya's first F1 black flag came in 2004 at the United States Grand Prix. After the Colombian's first choice Williams BMW failed to start, Montoya sprinted to the pit lane to start the race in the spare car. We've got a problem here, Montoya is bouncing out of the car and he looks pretty angry. He's, uh, there's a problem with that car, he's saying, get me the spare, I think. Yeah, he's, he's I think running he'll back. be running over to the spare car. They've yellow flagged his, will they let the pack go? The answer is yes, they will let the pack go. There's his stricken car on the grid. I think he'll now have to just go to the end of the pit lane and uh, join the race after the pack has gone through. He recovered quickly and was soon fighting at the front, but the axe would fall. Eventually, 57 laps into an incident-packed race, he was disqualified and forced to retire. Oh, what's this? A black flag? Yep, it's black flag for Montoya. Here comes Montoya. He's not wasting any time. The 1981 season finale took place at Caesars Palace, constructed just outside a Las Vegas casino. Gilles Villeneuve qualified well, placing himself behind the dominant Williams cars, but positioned his Ferrari wrongly on the grid, incurring the steward's wrath before the lights had even gone out, although unbeknownst to him. He'd stay blissfully unaware that he was disqualified from the race, though it turned out to be immaterial, as Villeneuve spun off the track on lap 23. Villeneuve! Gilles Villeneuve! It happened! Villeneuve! Often he's unlikely to get started again because he's on the sand. The 2007 Canadian Grand Prix wasn't just notable for being Lewis Hamilton's first victory in F1. It also saw a rare double disqualification for two of the front runners. In a chaotic race of four safety cars that saw dramatic crashes featuring Jano Trulli, Adrian Suttle, and a huge shunt for Robert Kubica, Felipe Massa and Giancarlo Fisichella managed to get themselves thrown out of the race. After both made pit stops, they exited the pit lane when the red light was on. Look, these are cars coming out of the pits with the red light on. They have to, and the BMW of Kubica waited for the green light. You are black flagged, Fizzy. You are black flagged. In now, please, Giancarlo. In now. And that means park it and go home. No questions asked. You're out of the race. Alan Prost incurred the wrath of the officials more than once in his career. And at the 1986 Italian Grand Prix, the reigning world champion started the race from the pits in his spare McLaren after his first choice car wouldn't fire up due to a battery problem. The Frenchman started well and fought his way into the top 10, but was disqualified for changing cars after the start of the parade lap, which was illegal. But his engine blew up a lap after he was flagged anyway. Being disqualified is one thing, but when it's your home Grand Prix, it just rubs salt in the wounds, and McLaren hadn't learned their lesson from two years earlier. After a gear linkage failure in his first choice car at the start of the Brazilian Grand Prix in 1988, the would-be pole sitter Ayrton Senna's stricken McLaren caused the start to be aborted and would restart the race from the pits using the spare car. Despite an epic recovery drive all the way from the back of the grid to second place behind teammate Prost, at the halfway point, Senna was shown the black flag for having changed his car after the race was originally green flagged at the end of the formation lap. Next number 12, Senna is being shown the black flag. This is amazing, I don't know the reason. Senna sees the black flag and that means you've got to come in. There is no argument if they show you the black flag, that's it. And to make things worse, his teammate went on to claim victory. The first of Elio de Angelis's three career black flags came at the 1981 British Grand Prix. After having trouble getting his car started on the formation lap, he illegally overtook numerous cars to regain his 22nd position on the grid. The Italian had stormed through the field, up into sixth position, but as chaos and carnage erupted around him, 
He was black flagged on lap 18 of the race. Furious, De Angelis returned to the pits and entered into a heated discussion with Robert Langford, head of the RAC. I accuse you, he is saying. And it's Robert Langford he's talking to. Every picture tells a story, and that picture certainly told one. Lotus team boss Colin Chapman said there was no way De Angelis should have been black flagged, saying it was the team's job to tell a driver to retire, not the stewards. I've never known this happen before in motor racing. Apparently he was black flagged because they felt that he didn't respect a yellow flag about 10 laps sooner. Normally it's an admonition. They slow the car down, talk to him, tell him he's been a naughty boy and then let him go. Not make him exclude, exclude him from the race like this. That's crazy. At the 1994 British Grand Prix, Michael Schumacher was shown the black flag more than once and still didn't stop. After qualifying P2, the Benetton driver decided to overtake pole sitter and title rival Damon Hill twice on the formation lap before reclaiming his proper position for the start of the race. The gamesmanship earned Schumacher a stop-go penalty on lap 14, which he had to serve by lap 21. But, as his team argued the decision, the German stayed out on track, leading to him being waved the black flag for a second time. Schumacher! No, Schumacher is going to be black flagged! What is happening to Michael Schumacher? For a team of Benetton's experience and professionalism, and there's Flavio Briatore, I'm sure cannot believe what's going on. Michael Schumacher did not stop. What we don't know is, did he get the command? And that means that Schumacher's race is over. In spite of this, he didn't return to the pits, going on to finish the race in second and stand on the podium. But two weeks later, Schumacher was disqualified. Benetton slapped with a $500,000 fine and the German handed a costly two-race ban. Hans Heyer's black flag at the Hockenheim ring during the 1977 German Grand Prix is easily the strangest disqualification in F1's long history. The German was a renowned touring car driver before he decided to test his skills in Formula One. But Heyer had an abysmal qualifying session in his Penske car, which ensured that he would not qualify for the race. However, on race day, Heyer slipped out of the pits and joined the race, completing eight racing laps before a gearbox problem forced him to retire. Having drawn attention to himself, Heyer was promptly disqualified, making him the only driver to not qualify for, not finish, and be disqualified from a single race. In the late 1960s, the British-Canadian driver Al Pease participated in three Formula One races in Canada. Using out-of-date equipment, he never had stellar pace. His first race in 1967 saw him finish 43 laps behind the winner, having suffered battery issues. And in 1968, engine trouble meant he failed to start. But in 1969, Pease came to the attention and annoyance of the race leaders after becoming involved in a series of on-track incidents while being lapped, most notably with Jackie Stewart's Matra. The stewards showed him the black flag after he'd completed 22 laps, at which time the leaders had completed 46. Pease is thus remembered, unfairly or not, as the only driver to be disqualified from a race for being too slow. Nigel Mansell collected three disqualifications across his long career in F1, but the most infamous occurred at Estoril in 1989. After qualifying P3 in Portugal, the Ferrari driver was soon in the thick of things at the front and was leading when he entered the pits for a tyre change on lap 34. Unfortunately, Mansell misjudged his speed, overshooting his designated spot before reversing back to park in position. This was a clear violation of the rules, and the Briton received a black flag later in the race. But controversy erupted when Mansell did not comply with the stewards and continued in a fierce battle with Ayet and Senna for second place. The pair collided, forcing early retirements, which not only ended the Brazilian's chance for a podium, but also helped ruin his bid to win the 1989 World Championship.